My soul. 
because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my Heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. This Gospel passes as well, first reading as well, even second reading from, to the Romans. All of these readings should be upsetting, shouldn't they? Or, are you upset? Are you thinking about the consequences of what you just heard? When Peter, who is so much like us, asks Jesus, well, I know the law of love. I mean, this is what we've been looking at, right? Remember last Sunday we were looking at what happens when somebody behaves badly? We have to love first. In other words, go to them first. Go and say, you know, you're behaving badly. Come back to the way, out of love. Remember what love is? I keep harping on it. St. Thomas Aquinas' definition. Memorize it. Love is willing the good of the other for the sake of the other. Right? You got that, right? Well, now we're talking about when the rubber hits the road. Because love and forgiveness are inseparable. And this is when it gets hard. So Peter says to Jesus, okay, I understand, I've got to love, that means I have to forgive. Well, how many times do I have to forgive? And he says, seven times? Remember, for the Jews, numbers were important. How many days in creation? Seven. It's perfection. The number seven is essentially infinity. So Jesus says to him, oh no, not seven. Seventy times seven. Infinity times infinity times infinity times infinity. You must always be prepared to forgive. You must never hold on to unforgiveness. But Peter is so much like, like us, and every teacher knows this, right, Paulo? I want you to write a 500 word essay. How many pages? Right? We always want to put limits on it, but 70 times 7, there are no limits. There are no limits to forgiveness because there is no limit to the command to love. So, let's look at the parable. I know you know it really well, but let's look at it. So, Jesus gives them a parable to sort of explain this. And he says, you know, there was a king who had all these slaves, and he decided one day to have a reckoning, and so he brought them in, one at a time. He said, you owe me this, you owe me that, you owe me this. This one comes in. He owes him 10,000 talents. What's a talent? A talent was a unit of weight. But essentially, a talent would be the equivalent of 15 years of wages. So imagine, 15 years of wages. This guy owes 10,000 times that. 10,000 times 15 years of wages. Have you ever had a credit card debt? You know what that's like? You know what that feels like? Right? Imagine you had a thousand credit cards that were all maxed out. You start to get the idea. So it's almost ridiculous when the man says to him, Have patience on me! Have patience with me! I'll pay you back everything! There's no way he can pay him back! And his master has pity on him. And not only does he forgive him his debt, but scripture says the Lord of that slave released him. Released him. There was a kind of a bond between them. And he releases him from that bond, from that debt. And he forgave him his debt. Now, that very same slave, who's just received this most incredible, infinite gift, goes out and sees another, one of his own, another slave, who owes him merely a hundred denarii. One of those was, a denarii was probably about a day's wage, roughly. Owes him a hundred denarii, a pittance in comparison to what he had owed. And rather than being filled with joy at what had just happened to him, he throttles the slave by the throat and says, pay me back everything you owe me. And the slave says to him exactly what he said to his master. Exactly the same thing. Pay what you owe. Have patience on me. I'll pay you. But he refused. He refused. 
and he threw him into prison until he would pay his debt of a hundred denarii. And here's the thing, it's bad enough. But the other slaves who saw it happen, the scripture tells us they were greatly distressed. Why? Well, because they knew what had happened with him and the king. They knew exactly what had happened. And so they're terribly scandalized. They know something evil has just happened. And so they go to the king and they say, this is what's happened. And the king calls him back and says, you wicked slave. You wicked, wicked slave. I showed you great mercy. You owed an infinite debt, which I forgave. And I released you from your debt. I released you from your obligation to me. And you went out and did this to another who is no different than you? So, in anger, the Lord throws him into prison to be tortured. How long? Seventy times seven. To be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. Forever. To be tortured. And that's the end of the parable. Why? <laughs> Jesus is not done. He's not done. He says, So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, you and me, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Wow. Every time you and I pray to our Father, we whip through it kind of quickly, don't we? Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's a contract. You've got a contract with God. Every time you pray the Our Father, you better be gutsy because you're asking God to do unto you what you do to others. And if you refuse to forgive, you're basically saying to God, do the same to me. Every time you pray the Our Father. Seventy times seven. All right. I think all of us have had the experience of being hurt or even hurting. We've even done it by accident, haven't we? Where we give somebody cause to hold a grudge against us or we fall into unforgiveness. We take the trap, the bait, and we're trapped. We allow ourselves to do that. We've all done that. But Jesus is telling us, how many times do you have to try to forgive somebody else? Seventy times seven. Forever. Infinity. Infinity times infinity. Why? Because you're always obligated to try to love. Always. Always obligated to try to imitate God. Always. You know, the mark of the Christians, John's Gospel, Jesus says, you know, they'll know you are my disciples by how you love one another. I, it's even more clear that they'll know that we're disciples of His by how we forgive. But you and I both know how difficult that is. There's nothing, you're not going to be asked to do anything more difficult in life, nothing at all, than to forgive somebody who owes you a debt, who owes you for having hurt you, who owes you an apology, who owes you justice. You're never going to have anything more difficult than to forgive that. Now, how's that possible? Is it possible? I mean, you have to forgive 70 times 7. How many times are you going to fail? 70 times 7. How many times will you have to try again? 70 times 7. What's the point? Is it possible? Only one way. We have been given the sacraments. They are the most important things in the world. The sacraments are. There's nothing more important. You can't show me anything more important that is more important than the sacraments. All of them are encounters with the person of Jesus. That's essentially what a sacrament is. You know, other people who've tried to live good lives that I admire, the Stoics, for instance, the Stoics from Rome or Greece, they're all, they, they all lived very virtuous lives, those who tried really hard. But they had to keep trying over and over again, and it was by their own efforts, and so of course they failed. And why? 
Well, because they're following a philosophy, an idea, which is good, it's noble, but that's all it is, is a philosophy. You and I are following a person, a whole person, the resurrected person, Jesus. And that is who is presented in all the sacraments, every one of them. Mostly obvious is in the Eucharist, where not only is this the power of Christ, it is Christ himself. But in every sacrament, every single one, the power of Christ is manifested. He presents himself to you. The sacrament of the anointing of the sick, the healing Jesus is made present. In the sacrament of confirmation, the sacrament of orders, the sacrament of matrimony, all the sacraments all have Jesus presenting himself in one aspect. The sacrament of penance. That one. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> this is not to make you feel guilty, please. It's not at all to make you feel guilty. Trust me, because I know that from what I, from where I speak, from whence I speak. When was the last time? When was the last time for you that you allowed yourself to be released by God's mercy from any unforgiveness, from any anger, any sense of being owed a debt? When did you allow God to release you from your debt? When was the last time? I'll say this. You know, the, the new priests are so cute. The young guys, Brian and Father Brian, who's over at St. Timothy's. The other day, he was telling me that they'd had a holy hour, an uh, exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, and he said, and afterwards, and we had confessions. I said, oh, that's great. I said, how many people? So I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> We're all trained really carefully to put up boundaries, and we push those boundaries out just to make sure that we, even by mistake, we don't do the dreadful thing, which is to reveal something that we shouldn't. Now, I happen to know, because people have told me, that it has happened to some of you that you've been treated badly in the confession. Some of you have been yelled at. Some of you have experienced the most grievous thing I can think of as a priest. The most grievous thing is to share something that I've heard in confession. Some of you have actually had that experience. Literally breaks my heart to hear that. When I was taught, it's funny, we had four years of practicum on this, on this sacrament. The conventional Franciscans were the confessors in Rome, and so we were particularly carefully trained in this sacrament. And I remember one of my profs said, and I remember clear as day, I can't tell you what I had for breakfast this morning, but I can tell you this 30 years ago. He said, always remember they didn't do anything to you personally. You have no right to get angry. You have no right to lose your patience with people when they come for God's forgiveness. Yeah. And here's, you know, Brian's, Father Brian's boundary is way out there. He won't even tell me the number of people. But I'll tell you, if somebody, it's happened to me here even, uh, if I'm hearing, if we're having a penance service and we've got people going to confession and somebody says to me later, I saw that, you know, Mrs. So-and-so was in line. I'll say, I don't know what you're talking about. That's how far we go to make sure that we don't do the dreadful thing. Because I'll tell you, for a priest, the dreadful thing is extremely serious. It's an automatic excommunication without even having been heard or judged. Automatic. It's deadly serious. So, for those of you who have experienced something terrible, I'm so sorry. But I'm asking you to think about doing it again, trying it again. Why? Because God wants you to be saved. God wants you to be free. That's really what God wants. God created you to be free, to be saved. That's why you were created. Remember, Irenaeus, the glory of God 
It's a human being that's fully alive. God's not there to weigh you down. God's there to release you, to set you free. That's what God wants. So if a bad experience is what's holding you back from, something, from you being allowed to release yourself, to save yourself through God's help, well then, I ask you to try again. If you want, ask me, I'll, sh I'll tell you who good confessors are. I, we get to know them, we get to know each other. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who's a good confessor. Or come and see me, if you trust me. But you don't have to. Uh, and uh, trust me, that my feelings aren't involved in this at all. If you need to go to confession and you need a good confessor, ask me. I'll point somebody out to you. But consider it, please. Because it's the only way, quite frankly. Human beings are not capable. We're not capable of doing it on our own. We need God's grace and His mercy in order to do it. How many times will you try to be perfect? 70 times 7. How many times will you fail? 70 times 7. With God's grace and mercy through the sacraments, it is possible. It's possible. Give it another chance.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread of your you. Through the earth, the work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased with us in the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my name. Desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. 
As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. And grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, that they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Albert, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, Saint Bernadette of Lourdes, Saint Boniface, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last, from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Throw him with him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all born in our shores, forever.
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sin, from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me depart from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. But only to say the word that my soul shall show me. The body of Christ. 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 No. Do we say? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. So just to remind you, if you receive, you can see it. And we can see this glass to the end. The body of Christ. 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 The 
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. That's the role. The body of Christ. 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 Stay with us from home. I offer to lead you in your prayer for communion by desire. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. How precious your mercy, O God! The children of men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and our bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, go in peace. Glorify the Lord with your very lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God.